So I was asked to do a video on this uh, storage compartment that goes in the front of this flow through center console on the Raptors and F-150s. Um, it, it was a, you gotta be careful when you do it. I'm gonna go through actually putting it back together and show you step by step how it goes back together because the vehicle is, is already apart. So obviously you'll do this in the reverse procedure. What I end up with is what you're gonna start with. But let's look at the box itself. Let's see what goes on with this box once you get to it. There's a wire in the back here. This is the trigger switch for when this thing is open. There's a part underneath here. That pushes up against that switch and it mounts right in here. So let's put this back together right now so I can show you how it just, it kind of snaps in here. And there's a, there's actually a, uh, a clocking point for it a pin so it sits like that in the back and you'll have to like pry these little tabs open on each side to slide that out of there once you get that out of there you can look at this this is the media hub wire that ends up going to the media hub down here You can actually, if you ever need to get that media hub out, you can do that from inside this box without pulling this whole entire assembly apart. By just coming up underneath this. You actually feel like if you get a real small, fine, fine, thin screwdriver, you can get up underneath this and pop this out of here without having to pull this whole assembly. But I have seen guys say, you know what, I don't even want to chance it. I'm not going to chance breaking it. I'm just going to pull the whole assembly out to get it out, which that's fine too. Uh, you find workarounds for stuff. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and pop this media hub wire back in here. I need two hands for that. It's kind of tricky to line up. It's It goes on the bottom port of the box. Right next to it here, you can see uh, there's a little small thin connector. It goes on the adjacent side of it as well. For this part right here, you see I got the box opened up right now and it's actually triggered the switch so the light has turned on. This part right here actually slides up in here. It's kind of funky how it goes back in, but the tabs, the, the tabs of this snap this side in. And then the face, obviously with the light, shines into the box so that common knowledge there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get that put in. I need two hands and I'll show you what it looks like once I fish it up and around this like so. So I've actually got it pulled through right now. I'm going to set my anchor spot in the bottom and then I'm going to snap in the top. All right, it's, oh, I didn't catch it quite. Let's try again. There it is. Now it's, you see it's got like a tooth on the bottom. It's got to sit over that and then it snaps in and now your light's in. Now what I actually need to do is do one thorough check to make sure everything's secured and pulled back together here. And then close my lid. Oh, I gotta run my wire. There's actually a set point underneath this here. Actually, this this here, this tang, actually grips onto this. Now when, you get, when I get to the point where I've got everything fastened back up and ran the way it's supposed to go in this storage compartment, what I'll do is I'll actually set my parking brake and then I'll pull my shifter out of the way. And now I'll try to slide this down in there. Need two hands for that. I apologize for the key, I've got it in that position just for a second. Uh, anyway, I cleared my media hub on this side. You can see how I got this corner lined up here. You see how I still got this piece in right here? I put that back in this morning before I started the job, not thinking about you know wh where I should be with this. Um, so what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna try to push this in right now, but I'm probably gonna have to take this piece out. Yeah, so I couldn't have that piece in there. Now I can go ahead and slide this box in there the rest of the way and get it dressed up and put the four screws back in it. What I did use for this was I used a seven millimeter ratcheting wrench to get these two bolts back here in the corner. There's one in the front and then there's one back here. Okay, you can see how I've got the box slid back in there. You see how it's kind of 
There's a tab right here in the front. I don't know if you can see it if I put my phone down. There it is right there. You can see there's a little tab right there. You just have to push in kind of, not hard, but clear it and then drop it down and then kind of like lift up in the back of this box and just kind of center it and make sure it's there. You're gonna get this little bit of play because it needs to be bolted down and now you put your four seven millimeter screws back in that cover. All right, I got my four screws started and lined up. Got the two over here and then two over here. So what I'm gonna do now I'm actually going to take my 7 mil ratcheting wrench and I'm going to go ahead and lock these back in and snug them down and then we'll be back with what the next step is. Now your next step would be going ahead and putting your trim pieces on the side here. Now, if on your four wheel drive side, your, your driver side here, plug your connectors and everything back in. Make sure you start at the bottom because look how this piece here is angled, that's angled, and then these are straight. You need to start at the bottom first and then snap your way up all the way through. And these are just quick connects. The trick to the interior work is to not be scared. If you're scared and you try to be careful, it's typically when you break things. But be conscious of what you're doing. I do know there's, uh, I'm, what I'm trying to specify, there's importance in being careful. But if you're too careful, that's when I find things break the worst. Again, these are just quick snaps. Slide your bottom in first. Kind of get the, the bottom set up and in there. And then pull your top through after you get your connectors and stuff plugged back into your four-wheel drive switch. Okay, I kind of like tilted this up on an angle slid it in there and then at the same time while lining up the holes I popped it in and then I popped the top in but that is of course because I um I plugged this in, or I, I did the connector first before I did that maneuver where I slid it up on an angle and then popped the bottom in then the top a lot of times when this switch goes bad you'll notice on the dash it, or it's missing the dash if the key's on it'll revert to uh four wheel drive lock diff It'll lock your diff, so when you're driving, it'll start chirping and banging around corners and stuff like that, and wheels will start hopping. If this goes bad, or it's unplugged, or something's wrong with the wiring, when you shut the vehicle off and go to turn it back on, you'll see a lock diff message on the screen. The best thing for you to do in a situation like that, if you know the switch is bad, or you need to do, repair some wiring, but you still gotta drive the truck, is go back to the differential and actually unplug the green connector that's plugged into the side of the differential housing. Right there. Okay, now I'm gonna go over to this other side and I'm gonna put the rest of my trim piece on here. Make sure everything's plugged in appropriately. Got that, that piece all lined out. Remember, this box has to start inside the hole as you're lining up the bottom. So make sure you, sometimes you gotta tweak this back a little bit. It almost feels like you have to bend it a hair to get the box to fit in properly. And then the bottom holes will line up. Uh, where are we at now? Where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? We are at the face here. So this face just drops down. Literally. No, no, no. Back up, Rich. Hold on. I'm going too quick. Uh, where's that little tray? The little dress-up box? It's here somewhere. Oh, this. This has got to go on now. This part right here is mainly what blocks you from getting to this. And in order to get this off... There's two bolts that go back behind here where the whole front of the radio has to be taken off to get to this. So basically this sits in this sits in here like so. Just like that. Just two screws hold it on there. That's it. One there and one there. One seven mil on each side. And honestly, it's not that hard to get this all apart once you get the hang of doing it. So let's go ahead and put our two seven mils in there. And then uh we'll get uh we'll go into the next step. Okay, I got my two 7 mils in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this front control interface module down. This is a front control interface module. This is a front display interface module. Behind it is your accessory protocol interface module. 
So this piece right here goes into this. This sits inside this housing. So a lot of people get that confused. This is your HVAC control head, or some people would call it a front control interface module. There's a number of different applications because uh, this would be a display interface, this would be a front, con front control interface, or this could also be considered your um, HVAC command center control module. Different manufacturers call it different things, but just know that this is your front display interface module and this is your accessory protocol interface module. This part right here is the part that typically goes bad. It makes the screen slow to touch, that makes the Bluetooth drop in and out, it causes uh, all of a sudden black screen issues and stuff like that. It's this module back here. And it basically has a couple Phillips screws that hold it on to this. And uh, typically this is what we're pulling apart to replace whenever you come in for sync three or any kind of sync concerns, we're after this here. So now I'll plug my connectors into the back of this and get this face snapped on. There's no screws involved other than the top right here. Everything just snaps back together. Come on, cooperate with me now. And then this part goes over here. This part sits like so. And there's the center control back, or the center command center back together. And then uh, you go ahead and put your two seven mil screws in right here at the top, boom, boom. Okay, those are back together now. I got the seven mil, seven mil screwed back down. Now you see this bottom here, it's got two screws in the bottom of it. Those line up with the two holes back here. Make sure you don't catch the wiring. Anyhow. And then these back here, inside this hole, Now once you get those in there, you'll go ahead and snap this cover back on. See that's a bunch of quick snaps. You actually just get like a plastic trim tool up underneath the front of this and you can just pop this thing right up and to get to those screws. Let me put these in real quick and then we'll go to the next step. Well, there we are, it's all snapped back together. Got my two screws in the back put back in, got my cover on the speaker put back on. Now what I'll start doing is I'll start assembling the center console area. I want to put a little disclaimer in here. You don't have to remove the center console area for all the stuff here in the center. All this. But you do have to remove the center console area to get to the screws that go here. And then everything else being removed also applies to remove this. Alright, I'm going to start putting things back together. So what we're going to do now is we're going to slide this cover over. It just snaps in. There's, it doesn't... It does have a couple screws, but you can see where somebody's been in here before and actually broke one of the holes. There's a little, like, T20 that goes up here. I'm going to snap this all back in right now. When you go to snap this back in, you go, you want to make sure you put all your connectors back. There's a connection here at the back of this for the lights that go to the Prindle. But in this, it would be park reverse neutral drive manual. And then... Before you get everything completely bolted down, slide your shifter knob in so you can un so you can plug it back into its spot down here. Now, if you ever had to just get the shifter off only, you don't got to take all this stuff off. All you have to do is just take a nice trim tool, put it up on top of this leather right here, pry it down away from the shifter. And then on the front side of the shifter, there's a YouTube video of a guy showing out how to do this. And he takes this whole center console part that is not necessary. All you do is push this leather down. You know, this thing sits right on the front of it. Once you get that leather unsnapped, you can actually reach down inside this hole and touch that white connector back there. And actually, it's you can see it. Uh, I just don't have good light right now. And you can actually take like a trim tool or a flat blade screwdriver and push this tab and lift that right out of there. And then 
take the two Phillips screws that sit right in the front of this out and slide the shifter head right out. You don't have to remove the whole center console for that. So you get this set in, you get your wires and stuff ran back down there. Since you got it off and you're at this spot right now, uh, then you pull the console up. And you got that clip back in. Now you can go back here with this electrical connector and get it plugged in. You can set all this down in here. See that one right there where they got it, they got that screw broke off inside there? Yeah. So then there's a T20 that goes here and a T20 that goes here. I'm gonna put those in and let's get ready to put the top cover back on. Okay, I got the T20 put back in the hole. And now we're at the top cover area. Some people like to move the shifter out of the way for this, but it's not, in every application, it's not always necessary. It just all depends on how careful you want to be when you do it. Um, seeing as this is, let's see here. Just, you just have to open up the side a little bit right here and open up the side a little bit right here and then you don't have to pull the shifter out of the way. And then you'll tuck these ends real nicely up underneath that a little bit and then everything snaps back in you just got to be really careful when you go to snap it back in because you will break these tabs but any it just all pops in snap in assembly that's it i fought this corner right here a little bit but i ended up getting it to pop back in and you can see an outline of where it's been sitting anyway around the plastic and the same thing over here this side actually just and then the rest of this just pops back in now you can get up here and go ahead and set your set screws in for your shifter. There it goes. Just took a little bit to get it to snap in. Oh, this corner's not snapping up. There we go. Well, there we are. Then put your rubber and stuff back in, all your dress up stuff. Uh, this goes here, and then let's make sure the light comes on when you're done. Okay, light is on, that's functioning fine. And uh, yeah, that's how you take apart the center console in the Raptor and F-150 flow through console, but also in the regular F-150s that don't have this flow through console, a lot of all this is still the same for this, this center part on how it all comes apart. Thanks guys, I appreciate it. Um, I hope this helps. Remember, when you're tear down, you obviously want to go in the reverse order. If you're trying to get into here for something, uh, the storage compartment area or something like that, then obviously you're going to want to... It's like they spilled something on this. It's got like coffee or whatever, sticky stuff on the edge of this right here. I was trying to figure out why it was taking so long for this to get now it's working it just needed to be worked a few times anyhow if you're trying to get to the storage compartment in here all the stuff has to be done if you're just trying to get to the shifter you don't need to pull apart all this to get to the shifter knob if you're trying to get to the a pim and the front display interface module or your hvac control module something like that all the center part right here has to get taken apart but you don't have to pull apart any of the side stuff just the center stuff if you're trying to um uh, get to just this switch right here all you got to do is just grab the top corners and just pop this thing right off it comes out just be careful of your edges yep that's the gist of it same thing on the other side 
it's as clean as it gets thank you guys for sitting through this long video but i was asked to do a video on putting everything back together and taking it apart well there it is you just have to follow the reverse procedure the only tools that you're going to need for this job um it's seven millimeter bolts t20 uh torques for these two little set screws right here on the side any of the apim stuff that hold the radio face and stuff on all that's all seven mil so you're already going to have that anyway audio control module on the bottom if you drop out am fm but everything else seems to work fine your bluetooth seems to work well not even really bluetooth sometimes the audio control module can affect that but also am and fm will be affected as well even your Sirius can drop out. But everything on the screen seems to work fine. You got good touch going back and forth and stuff. There's no lagginess. Um, typically, it, that comes down to the audio control module. But when it's dropping out, Bluetooth is disconnecting. Uh, slow to respond on the screen in between selections. That's that module I pointed out in the back, the accessory protocol interface module. It's attached to the front control display interface module. So that's how you can kind of decipher the two. Anyway, thank you. Sorry it being so long and me rambling on.